Hey guys, Frank Cox here, SmokerBuilder.com. Uh, welcome to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Today's episode, I'm going to answer a question that was recently asked to me in one of our live Q&A sessions we hold every month. The question was, what kind of baffle should I use in an offset smoker? So I'm going to go way technical on this episode and get way out in the weeds. If you want to hear the answer, stay tuned. But before we get into this week's episode, uh, what I would like to do is invite you to join us on one of these live Q&A sessions. Uh, simply click the link down below. It says link tree at the bottom. And uh, in that link tree, it's gonna bring up a whole bunch of helpful resources. One of those resources is to join, sign up for our live Q&A. If you sign up, I'll send you a link and you can join us on the next one. And maybe even have your question featured on one of these podcasts. So anyway, enjoy the episode and uh, let me know what you think about it by giving me a thumbs up or even commenting down below your more questions about this topic or other stuff that maybe you think I need to elaborate on, stuff like that. Uh, anyway, enjoy the episode. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. They put a scoop out the throat that goes directly. It, it basically just gets everything like here's your cooking grate right here. We're just shooting everything above the cooking grate because we don't want to lose that first foot of cooking grate right there. Like basically that's a microwave right there, you know, coming out of the throat if you don't have that. So there's a dude named as you probably heard of him. Um, back in the day, the way that got started is he wanted to use that first bit of cooker because he was losing it. He was making briskets in production, let's say. I don't know the exact story. But so what he did is he stacked up splits in front of the throat. And so what would happen is, is it would just kind of like push everything up to the top. Well, on the other end, our stack is down low. And so what would happen is, is we would get this, everything wants to go up. As that air mass cools off, it wants to start kind of coasting down a little bit. All we have to do is drop our stack down and encourage it. So what we wind up with is we wind up with a perfectly even cook chamber temp but we shot everything straight to the top. And that's what that scoop is for. And then we start to damper down on the smokestack. You hear these guys talk about draw on their cooker with an open offset, what I call an open offset. There's two different kinds of offsets, by the way. An open offset is like wide open. There's nothing in the cook chamber under the cooking grate, right? So what happens is we try to damper down that stack and that causes some friction there. What that does is it, it actually causes, you ever seen an eddy in a, in a river? It does like what's called turbulation. So that air does like this, it, it spins. Now, air is like water, it's a fluid, right? Even though it's not liquid, it's a fluid. So when that turbulation starts, it's literally restricting airflow in the cook chamber. It, it causes resistance to, to flow. So what happens is, is we do this in the cook chamber, right? We start to get this mix up of air pattern. It starts to move around the meat. It starts to swim around in there. And what happens is, is we get two things from that. The longer the air mass dwells in the cook chamber, like we have a cubic feet per minute, right? We're measuring the cubic feet, one foot by one foot by one foot of air. How long does it take to get through the cooker or the duct in a, in a HVAC system? How long does that volume of air take to get through the cook chamber? That's the flow rate, right? So the longer that air mass, that piece of air sits in the cook chamber, the, the more heat we're going to withdraw out of the air into our food and the cooking grate and the cook chamber, the steel, heat that steel up the more efficient the burn is gonna be. But at the same time, the thing that causes flavor is the, is the sediment in the air. So like literally it's particles of the wood and the combustion process that are in the air called combustibles. Those things start when the air mass cools off, those combustibles fall on the meat and we start to get that flavor. That's where the flavor comes from. So an efficient combustion process we have an efficient cook chamber that's sucking heat out of that air mass, right? And we're controlling that with not only the air coming in on the, and the size of the fire, but also the smokestack damper. I only open it about 25% because I want to restrict the volume of air, 
But when you look at the smokestack, the thing they're calling draw is how fast it looks like it's moving. So when volume is restricted, like putting your thumb over a hose, velocity goes up. It, it goes faster. That's why we can put our thumb over a hose and we have pressure washer now. We've built back pressure back here and it's all pushing, trying to get through. So that's what happens in an open offset cooker with that scoop that goes up. In a traditional offset, there's open offset, which is what everybody's building right now. But there's old school, which is traditional offset, which is a combination of what's behind me here in a hybrid. So what we get there is we're keeping that air mass below the cook chamber, right? Below the cooking grate, I'm sorry. When it comes out of the throat, it goes below the cook the cooking grate. And we have tuning plates in there that are short. Usually we take that full length of whatever our reverse flow baffle plate is. And we would, we would subtract like three inches off of that, depending on the size of your cooker, whatever your baffle plate gap would be, we would minus that off. We would take the rest of that plate and cut it up, starting at a 12 inch piece all the way down to like a four inch piece. We would just stagger them in there. And you literally put gaps between all of those plates now we get this motion like this coming up, right? That's how used to build his cookers. And uh, you get this awesome flavor from those as well. I cook in this one, this 2040 behind me. I cook in it as a, as a traditional offset in offset mode most of the time. Um, what happens is a reverse flow, on the other hand, we wind up so like because of all this garbage I'm saying here, we built them too efficient back in the day. You would have clear smoke, right? So when you have clear smoke, your combustion process is too good. So what happens is it's, you're getting complete combustion. White smoke is not complete combustion. It's soot. You, you have extra products of combustion there that you don't want that give bad flavor and over smoked flavor, right? So, uh, a reverse flow is all the way on the other end of the spectrum that burns too clean. So we get too much efficiency out of it and you get thin blue, you get clear smoke and maybe thin blue smoke when you put a log on. So what happens is you lose flavor because it's all burning up in the cook chamber, in the firebox. You're not getting all that intense flavor that you would get in an offset. Anyway, that's kind of what we do. Um, the throat opening with the scoop is, is like an open offset and we're attempting to let the air mass cool and let food sit on the meat, or I mean, I'm sorry, flavor sit on the meat. As it cools off, the sediment drops out. We got this flavor profile, flip and rotate. It's a lot more work. Flip, rotate, more work to run the fire, more flavor penetration. That's why those guys like and uh, some of those other guys with no air inlet, that's why they get that intense, crazy, awesome flavor is because they got an inefficient cooking process that's riding that line between white smoke and thin blue smoke as they pile wood into that cook chamber, into the, into the firebox, and the air goes over the fire. Fire coming in under a log rack, you're going to be too efficient at some point if you reverse flow it out. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pitmaster Secrets podcast. Uh, once again, I'm Frank Cox. I'm the founder of Smoker Builder, and uh, what I want to do is extend an invitation to you. If you're looking to get your smoker started, building your first one or your next one, if you have any questions or I can be of any assistance at all, please click the link in this description or just simply type in smokerbuilder.com. That will take you to my website. And on that website, I'm going to get you started on whatever information you need to help you get your build, build done faster and easier than you can imagine. So anyway, go to smokerbuilder.com. Also join in our community. And if you found this episode valuable, please like and share with your friends and subscribe to this channel. So anyway, I appreciate you. Until next time, keep your smoke thin and blue and uh, we'll see you later.